In this video, we're going to finalize appearances, make final adjustments to the model, and create some renders of our Porsche 911. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to finalize our Porsche 911 concept. And when I say finalize, that is really up to you. Obviously, you can make as many modifications or changes as you want. As we've already seen, we split the body up into many different pieces. So you can do things like modify the front and rear bumper, the arrow, the spoiler, all those different things. That all comes back to how far you wanna take your design. As I've already mentioned, there are certain things that take a good bit of time that we're not gonna do. Things like creating trim around the glass and trim around the rear and just those basic modifications. However, we are going to finalize a few key aspects of this. Now, one thing that I note when I'm looking around, the spoiler itself looks too small. So that's the first thing that I wanna modify, and I'm gonna do this as easy as I can. So I'm gonna select it, go to modify, and I wanna scale it. So we're gonna use scale. I'm gonna view this from the top, and instead of doing a uniform scale, we're gonna do a non-uniform scale. I can begin to scale it outward and pick how wide I want it. And I can do this from the side and I can do this from the top. So this will help me increase the size without having to go back and remodel anything. So one thing that we wanna be mindful of is just the overall size and position of the wing. And then we'll say, okay. You could of course go back and remodel it, but this gives us a little bit of a shortcut. The next thing that we need to do is we need to fix it because the brackets are now peeking through the top. So a way that we can do this is by simply moving the wing. So you can either select move copy from modify or you can hit M on the keyboard. So I'm gonna simply move it up and forward a little bit, making sure that my brackets are still touching the wing. You can see that the bracket shape because it was originally created based off of that profile, it doesn't quite match our wing anymore. So I just need to move it until a position where it actually fits inside the wing or I can use the wing itself to cut the bracket. So once I've moved it into a position that I'm happy with, I'm gonna use split bodies. And first I wanna bring back my edges, control and six. Then I'm gonna use modify, split body. Bodies to split will be both of these brackets. And the splitting tool is gonna to be a portion of the wing. And you'll notice that when I select both, it doesn't have to extend it out, but it doesn't give me the okay option anymore. So it's only allowing me to do it with one of them. That's okay, we can repeat this process. And bodies to split on the other side, splitting tool will be this, and we'll say okay. This should have given us a couple of small pieces that we can now remove. So we just need to find those, select them, right click and remove. Now again, this is one of those areas where you could spend a lot of time on your design, creating a custom wing, creating some custom arrow. I'm not gonna go through all that because those are really personal decisions on how you want your design to look. I really wanted to get you about 98% of the way there and let you work on those custom details. Some of the other things that we could do, again, we could modify or work on the arrow. We could finish off the bottom of the body a little bit better. Not really too worried about it. But what I really wanna do is I wanna come and I wanna work on some appearances. This can be done here in the design workspace, or we can do it in the render workspace. Either is fine. The render workspace might visually look a bit better. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna hit A on the keyboard. You can also go to Setup and Appearances. And this white paint appearance, I wanna to apply to anything that I forgot, like the mirrors. And I'm gonna rotate it around and maybe apply it to anything else that I may have missed. Then I'm gonna take my black paint enamel, apply it to the wing and anything else that needs to be black. Now I wanna black out some of these areas. So I'm gonna use the face option and I'm simply gonna drag and drop the black onto the faces that I wanna black out. So again, just simply drag and drop until we're happy there. Now we want to create some appearances for glass. So we can use the gray glass that we had for the rest of the glass on the car. 
We could also thicken that surface into a solid, which will give it a little bit more realism. I'm not too worried about it right now. Then I want to go through and I want to hide the headlight glass on both sides. So I want to find where those are and hide them because now I need to apply some appearances to this stuff. Now, everything inside of here is going to be illuminated. So I really want a, a black material that is rough. So I'm going to go to a powder coat rough, find the black, and I'm going to drag it on everything that's inside of the headlight area. So that's my halo piece. That's the headlight bucket piece that we created. You can go back to the bodies option because we did make sure that all these were surfaces. If it asks you to remove, that's because the face option overrides the body option. So you can apply a material or an appearance to an entire body, and then you can apply it to a face on top of that. So uh, let's go ahead and let's just work our way around. If you see anything funky here, that probably means that your glass is still visible. So just make sure that you hide that, you get the rough material, go ahead and drag it onto everything inside of here, including the headlight bucket. And if that's missing, then it's probably hidden somewhere. So this right hand headlight, that's the part that was missing. We'll go ahead and make sure that we drag it in there. So now that we have all of those applied, we need some sort of light emitting material. And the easiest way that I found to do this is just simply use the search. I'm gonna type in LED, and then you'll see that we get things like these different LEDs, displays, different colors. The main one that I'm looking for is going to be this LED, and this is a, an SMD, which is essentially a surface mount, and it has a, a certain value. We're gonna do this by dragging it to a face. So we're gonna take this and drag it onto the face of the headlight and the face of that halo. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So if you have headlight glass, make sure that you hide it because you want to apply it to just these pieces here. And then once we've applied it to all of those, we can edit and we can increase the luminance value, which will be how bright it is. That's going to really determine how it looks in your renders. I'm not too worried about it right now. So I'm going to bring back the headlight glass pieces and make sure that we see those. If you don't see the headlight glass on the other side, just make sure you go through your browser and figure out which pieces were there. Next thing we're gonna do is come back to the tail light. While we're still on LED, I'm just gonna take a red LED and apply it to that. And again, that'll emit some light and we don't even have to worry too much about trimming. And then this bottom piece here is still metal. So I'm going to use the bodies option. I'm just gonna apply black paint. Now, of course you could go and do things like carbon fiber, but um, the black is gonna work for us. Also, if you remember inside of here, we blocked off the inside of that. I'm gonna take a black appearance and I'm just gonna block that off. And the rest of this is open. You could block that off if you want to. If you're worried about the renders, if you're gonna do anything from directly in front, you could just create a fake surface in there to sort of block it out. So the last bit is going to be these little brackets here. Now, Necessarily, they don't necessarily need to be anything specific, but I'm gonna go ahead and type in carbon fiber. You can see that we've got a twill and a plane. If you ever see an arrow on the right-hand side, that means that you need to download it. I have already downloaded these, so I don't have to. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it onto these brackets and then say, okay. Everything else should be fine, but the rims and tires, if you wanna change the color, so that black appearance, was already applied to the rim, which is why it's in here. There's also a satin steel and an anodized aluminum. If you happen to apply that other places, so for example, the window trim, and you decide that you wanna change the color. So for example, if we go into the library into paint glossy and say I wanted the rims blue, if I drag that blue over the black, it's gonna change anything that has that applied. So you can see the wing, the window trim, everything there has it applied. If you wanna change it, you simply just drag something else on it. So just keep in mind, if you are applying appearances to multiple things like the glass, then it's going to apply everywhere. So if you make changes, for example, if I make the glass darker, then it's also gonna make the glass on the headlights darker. So just be aware of that. You might want to just be careful where you apply things. Now that we have those details sorted, the next thing for me to do is to go into my scene settings. I need to decide if I wanna use an environment or if I just want like an empty studio room. 
The dry lake bed works pretty well, so I'm going to drag and drop that in here. And you can see that because in our settings we have a solid color background, it's going to use the light and the reflection from that environment, but the background is still going to be whatever solid color we decide. So for example, if you just wanted a white background, but you wanted the lighting that comes along with that outside scene, you can use that. If you want to see the environment, just simply change the background to environment. Now, there is a trick here that we want to make sure we understand, and that's flattening the ground. So if we zoom in and zoom out, you can see how the car is sort of changing scale relative to the environment. That can be helpful depending on what the environment is, but it also doesn't help with realism because you can see how large the cracks are in the ground and how small the car. It looks like a remote control car. So we want to flatten the ground, which is going to take the HDR environment and it's going to create a flat plane and apply that car to or apply the appearance to that flat plane. And then the car is going to look a bit more real. The scale is going to be better and everything is just going to going to look more realistic. So I think that that's important. And one thing that I've talked about before is the interface between the tires and the ground on renders like these tend to be the hardest thing to control. And there are a few different ways we can get around that. One is by changing the position of the light. So if we rotate this around and we have the shadow in a certain place, for example, our tires are in the shadow, it can help us get a little bit more realism. We also have control over the ground scale, and this can really help, again, just kind of make sure that the scale of the ground looks okay. There are some things that you need to be aware of with using the flattened ground option. And if we go to another background, for example, the plaza, so this is another popular one to put a car in, but when we flatten the ground, you can see in the background, the interface between the building and the ground is not realistic because it's taking this essentially a spherical HDR image and it's taking the ground portion of that and flattening it out. So while it works great with the lake bed, it doesn't work great with a scene like this unless you get it to a certain angle where you don't really see that. Um, now, if you run into an issue, if you want to do a render in a scene like this, then going back to settings and turning off that flattened ground is probably going to be your best option. And then you'll want to play around with the rotation. And again, just try to make sure that you position it correctly. Um, that's It's not really the best. And I think that either the dry lake bed or the crossroads, those are, are two good ones that uh, you can really get a good render out of. But again, flattening the ground is kind of the way to make that happen, but it does affect other things, right? It does kind of mess up the background. You just have to find the correct position. So with that in mind, if you want to position the car in a certain place, then we can mess around with things like the ground scale, make sure that the ground scale is appropriate, and then the rotation of the image works for wherever you want to sort of park the car. So if you want to put it right in the middle there, just make sure that the scale is, is roughly appropriate for whatever size your vehicle is. So that looks pretty good. And then we can decide where we wanna position everything. Another thing that's pretty helpful to make a little bit more realistic render is to come in and play around with the camera. So right now the focal length of 90 millimeters is pretty good, but if we wanna sort of stretch things out, we can use a smaller focal length if we use a larger focal length, it's gonna get rid of a lot of that perspective. So using a smaller one can give the impression that uh, you know, the scale of whatever, uh, whatever you're working on uh, is, is pretty big or you're pretty far away. Then you can also add depth of field. Now, depth of field is a pretty nice touch and it allows you to pick a center of focus. So for example, if we want the center of focus to be you know, somewhere around the bumper or um, somewhere around the hood, we can sort of focal do that as our focal point, and then everything outside of that will begin to get blurry. And you can modify this, but note that you're not really going to be able to see the difference until you actually produce a render. So it's important that you just play around with these settings. If you are rendering on the cloud, it does open up a few extra post-processing options that you don't get if you render locally. So you can adjust things like hue and bloom and the exposure values and do some color correction. We don't have that if we're rendering locally, but if you're, uh, if you're playing around with these settings and you're rendering on the cloud, note that you do have a couple of additional post-processing options that are pretty helpful. 
So I'm good with all those settings. I'm going to close and I'm going to begin the process by using in canvas render. Now, what this does is it starts the ray tracing process, which looks through each pixel in the scene and it calculates what the light and reflections are doing. Now, this is a great first step. And the reason that this is a great first step is it can instantly tell us if something doesn't look right. And I can tell that the halo <clears throat> isn't really looking right. It's pressed up against the, the lens and the lens doesn't really look realistic. So that instantly tells me that I wanna fix that before I commit to a final render. In order to do that, we have to go back to the design and then figure out what we're gonna do here. So the halo is gonna be this piece and uh, it's gonna be this piece right here. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna move both of those backwards a little bit, get them away from the headlight. So I'm just gonna pull them back. I wanna make sure they're still visible, but just a little bit further back. So I'm gonna say okay to that move. The next thing that I wanna do is I want to thicken the glass up. So the, the glass right now is just a surface, which means it doesn't really have any depth to it. So I'm gonna to go to my surface tools. You can also do this from your solid tools and go to create and thicken. So I'm gonna thicken that glass inwards a distance of just two millimeters and say, okay. And I'm gonna repeat that process on the other side with this one, two millimeters and say, okay. Then I need to go back and I need to apply my glass appearance to it. Now, the, the glass appearance again is automatically applied to the other pieces of glass. We've got the windscreen, the side windows and all that. So you might wanna decide if you want to use it here as well. So I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna use it here as well. It's asking us about removing it because we already had an additional appearance applied to an individual face, but this will give us a little bit more depth because it's got thickness to it now. It's a solid body, not just a surface. So now that I've adjusted that, I'm gonna do a quick save. And I'm gonna go back to my render workspace, see if that looks a little bit better. So back in render, uh, we're gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna start that ray tracing process again. So you can see it looks a little bit better. And now what we're actually getting is we're getting some light scatter happening inside the headlight. So this is an area where again, you could spend a whole lot of time trying to get it to look realistic. It's going to come down to how much time you really want to invest and whether or not that is, is gonna work for your renders. So everything else looks pretty good. The rims, the body, the glass all looks pretty good. The headlights are not really giving me that, uh, that same impression. So the way that I'm gonna go about this is I'm gonna hit A to go into my appearances. I'm gonna edit the appearance for the LEDs and I'm gonna reduce their intensity. I'm just gonna drop it way down and then I'm gonna start the in-canvas render again. So reducing their intensity will help a little bit. We can also go to the point where we turn them completely off. So again, we can edit that value and take it way down to zero, which means that the appearance is still there. It's not going to emit any light. It'll still look like an LED or something turned off. And then we're not getting that same sort of really fake effect. But again, these are the areas where you could spend a ton of time trying to get something to look realistic. I don't really know what the inside of the Porsche headlight's gonna look like, but if you wanna model things like um, a light bulb, then you could go ahead and you could get it to look a little bit more realistic. Um, as I'm rotating around, I can see that I missed a spot right here. So I'm gonna go back to face, go back to the black paint and just apply it there. So now that my appearance is good, I just wanna pick a position for the render and I'm gonna just sort of orient it like this, do a quick test with my in-canvas render. And you can see that the reflection from the environment um, is kind of looking a little fake. You can see the big lip on the rear rim. If we wanna modify that at all, we can. But while we're doing the in-canvas render, you can also rotate this around and figure out what position looks good, you know, good for you. This environment tends to have a lot more reflections on the glass, whereas if we go to the, the dry lake bed, um, we, we have a little bit less of that. So let's try the dry lake bed and let's just take a look. You can see that it's, it's not quite as apparent. I can get I, sort of a little bit better view of this. 
And I think that looks pretty good. We got the deep lip rear rim. We've got the front with the black inset, the, the small mirrors, the bigger spoiler, the lights, uh, all that stuff is, is looking pretty good. The other thing that we could talk about or we could do in the scene settings is we could reduce the brightness level. So right now it's at about 37,000. If we took this way down and we go back to our appearances, to our LED light, and we turn the luminance value back up, then what we could do is, is we could have sort of a, a night scene and we could get some light coming off the headlights. So uh, you could do some pretty cool things with this if you really spend a bunch of time, you know, creating the the details that you want for the headlights, and uh, then you can you could sort of come up with a, a pretty neat sort of appearance or a pretty neat render. So I think that looks pretty good. You can see it's scattering some light on the ground. So if if we want to take that a step further, go back into that appearance, crank up the intensity so that it is actually emitting some light. The LED on the rear, you can see that this is a fairly low value, so we kick that up and then it looks like the brake lights are on. And once again, just do a quick in-canvas render test. You're getting some brake light scattering on the ground. Because it's not completely sealed off, you might see a little bit of light inside. So that's something that you, you, know, you maybe wanna play with. So I'm just gonna find a position that looks good for this and probably reduce that value just a little bit. So I wanna find the red LED. Uh, so this one here is white, this one here is red, and just reduce that luminance value a little bit. And then I'm gonna fire off a render. So once again, if you're rendering on the cloud, that does open up a few extra options. You can decide what appearance or what file format and transparent background you want later. For me, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick 1280 by 720. I'm gonna do local render. In advanced settings, it opens up a little bit extra quality. And that really just is the level of refinement, the number of iterations it goes through. So I'm gonna go ahead and render that and see what it looks like. All right, so let's, let's take a look at the final render here. So you can see that looks pretty cool. We've got the light scattering on the ground the red LED taillight, the single bar across the back. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna rotate this around and I want to reset the center of focus. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on this side, maybe focus my attention on the mirror somewhere in the middle of the car and, and go ahead and fire off another render. Again, I'm gonna do a quick in canvas. It'll give me a, a pretty quick idea of what this is gonna look like. And if I'm happy with that, then I'll go ahead and I'll just let it do a full render. I'm gonna keep the same settings, local render, set it to excellent 1280 by 720. I'm gonna allow it to render locally and then just take a look. While that view is rendering, we can go ahead and we can set up another one. It might be kind of neat to see it, uh, you know, see the work from the top. We get a little bit of shading, probably from this angle it would look pretty cool with the tail light. So um, again, I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna allow that to render. I'm gonna use all my same settings, the same size. If you are using cloud credits and cloud rendering, if you're on an education license or if you're on a commercial license and you've got cloud credits to use, just keep in mind that the different settings, the size of the image and uh, you know some of these various settings are going to dictate how many cloud credits are required. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna be doing a lot of rendering, the cloud credits can go really quickly. So just make sure that you are aware of that. The renders are not gonna be any better or worse if you do them locally or on the cloud. Just when you do them on the cloud, what ends up happening is, again, you've got some additional post-processing options. You can pick the image type when you download it. When you're doing it locally, uh, if you download it, it's gonna be whatever you set. PNG with a transparent background, that's how it was rendered. So if you're doing it locally, then note that. You will still have the option to do a turntable render. So even if you render locally, you can select turntable. But remember that turntable can only be done on the cloud. And whether you do six frames or 36, it's gonna cost you at least six cloud credits, sometimes many more. So just keep that in mind that you can do a turntable render. It's gonna look a whole lot better if you use like a photo booth with a white background. It doesn't look very realistic because 
the scene is going to stay static and the object, the car in this case, is going to rotate around. Uh, I wasn't really intending this to be a full rendering tutorial, but this is sort of the, the product of your work, right? This is, this is the end result, and you want to be able to, you know, create some cool views, create some cool renders. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get sort of a, a really close-up view of just the wideness of the car. So this can be kind of fun because we can see all the work for things like the door seams and the creases. And I'm just going to do a render of this one as well. And then we can uh, take a look at all these when they're done. There is not going to be a limit to the number of renders. If you like one of the views, you can always drag it to this render on save. Uh, if you make any changes to the car, if you change the body, change the color, it will automatically re-render that for you if you have the render on save. It's going to do that on the cloud. It won't use your local credits, uh, and it's, it won't cost you cloud credits, but it will re-render that for you. So just keep that in mind that you do have that option as well. So here we can see the, the top one is finished rendering, and that looks pretty cool. You can see the ground. Because we have the depth of field still turned on, even though we're further away, the focus is on the car, and then everything outside of it based on those settings is starting to get blurry. So that's kind of a cool look. This one here is taking a bit longer, and again, it's based on those depth of field settings. So you can see that the door is in focus. That's where our focal point is. And the stuff that's close to us here is kind of blurry. Uh, so again, it's kind of a cool effect. You can really use that to your advantage when you're setting up renders if you want to uh, you know, focus on certain details like the wheels, then you can set the depth of field to the wheels. If you want to focus on the width of the body or uh, a, certain, a certain aspect of the car, then we can do that. But you always want to do make sure that if you want to use that setting, that you make sure that you set the specific focal point. So the center of focus, if we want it to be the mirror, for example. Now, this would be really cool if we actually had glass on the mirror. But just keep in mind that those settings, things like the focal point and the depth of field, especially depending on how you set those things up, they're going to take more time to render. And one of the benefits of using cloud credits and cloud rendering is that all the renders can be going at the same time. And when we're doing it locally and using our local resources, we, we have to do one at a time. You can see this one still says about two minutes left. And I don't, I don't have the best graphics card in the system I'm using here, but I do have a relatively fast processor and, and decent settings on this computer. So it is going to take a bit of time depending on this, the system that you're using. So I'm going to allow these to finish rendering. And as soon as they're done, we can go ahead and we can take a look. But the main takeaway here is just think about the level of detail that you want to put into your design. If um, if you really want to focus a lot on those small details, then you really are going to have to put in the effort. The amount of time throughout these videos was roughly 10 and a half hours. So somewhere around 10 and a half hours for us to model the car body, make the final tweaks, put all the details like the door seams and the glass, uh, the, the louvers for the back, and to do these final renders, it's about 30 minutes here. That realistically, once you are comfortable with everything, that could take in total about three to four hours. If you decide to put in a lot of details, then that's going to end up taking obviously several more hours. I mean, you could really spend, you could spend anywhere from five to 50 hours, depending on the level of detail you want. Uh, I, I should also mention that Fusion 360 does a really good job with rendering for most situations, but there is going to be a limitation to it as well. So just keep that in mind that Fusion 360, while it's a, a great tool and it does most things pretty well, there are going to be limitations. So things like um, advanced settings for renderings, we can't add cameras, we can't add our own lights, we can't, um, we can import our own HDR environments, like we, we can make some adjustments there, but for the most part, you're going to just want to work with what you have available to you. If you want to do some more advanced rendering, then you need to sort of take it out of Fusion 360 and into another program that's made for that. 
But hopefully you're pretty happy with the results. Uh, if you spent all of this time modeling your own car, I hope that you're happy with the way that it looks and you didn't have any major problems. I obviously provided the car model along the way, so you should have at least had that as a reference. If you did finish it up and you wanna send me some pictures or if you had any problems and you want me to take a look at it, then please shoot me an email, support at caducator.com. And if you had any comments or questions, then you can go ahead and leave them in the video or send me an email as well. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.